Weather and life both change quickly. Do you have a farm estate plan? You need to learn the best option to help your family avoid or minimize federal estate taxes and other costs. I'm Brad Swenson, President of Swenson Investments and Commodities. We work confidentially with farmers, ranchers, and advisors to help develop the best farm estate plan. In today's Farm Basics, we're going to be discussing corn maturity. Now corn gets pushed along by heat and when it gets into the reproductive stages there are really six stages of reproduction in corn. The first stage is silking, the next stage is blister, the next stage is milk, then dough, then dent, and finally physiological maturity. I get questions from time to time from non-farmers saying why do the silks eventually turn brown? Well here's what happens. The silks that come out the end of the ear they're each attached to an individual kernel on the ear and when they get fertilized when they get pollinated and the pollination process is complete then they will detach themselves from each one of those individual kernels and then they're no longer a part of the plant so that means that the silk eventually is going to die when it dies it turns brown as those kernels are fertilized and eventually you start to see dry matter accumulation inside them when we talk about milk, dough, uh, those stages are you know, pretty liquidy yet in that milk stage. And then once we get to the dough stage, uh, it starts to get a little bit firmer inside the kernel. Now keep in mind, uh, corn plants are mostly water. So accumulating this dry matter, it's not gonna be just a solid hard kernel like you think of. It's going to be mostly liquid. But as that develops, eventually it's going to get harder and harder and then you'll see that top part of the kernel dent in. And that's what farmers are really looking for. They're anxious to get that corn to the denting stage. Then they know they're pretty safe from a lot of weather disasters that can happen late in the season. The way that farmers determine what type of corn they want to plant is how long their growing season is. And to determine how long the growing season really is, you look at the average number of GDUs you normally get. What that is is growing degree units and the way you calculate these growing degrees is you take the high for the day plus the low for the day and then you divide by two. And then you subtract 50 which is really your base. If 50 is going to be your lowest temperature that you'll register there to get what that growing degree day unit is. Now the thing is with the high it can only be as high as 86. Any number higher than 86 you only use 86 and the low can only be as low as 50. So any, lo any number lower than 50, it only counts as 50. Well anyway, when you add these growing degree units on, basically the further north you are in our country, you have a lot less heat units or growing degree units, and you can't raise a longer maturity corn like you can in the southern United States. So let's just stress again, with corn to get to maturity, it takes a lot of heat. Now it doesn't really matter if that heat comes over a really long season or if it all comes in a relatively short period of time. When we have years that are exceptionally hot, like this summer was pretty hot in our area, it really pushed that corn along even though we had some corn that was fairly late planted, uh, it's still going to make it in time for harvest. It's going to get to physiological maturity before we have that hard killing frost, most likely because we had lots of heat to push along. Well, heat also seems to push along our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you what it is and how to control it coming up later in the show.